Hey, welcome back to Country Dance Spotlight. Uh, again with me today is Stuart Old. Um, how are you doing, Stuart? I'm doing great. How are you? Yeah, good. I guess I should introduce myself. Uh, my name is Rob Ironside. I'm the, I'm the president for the Country Pride Dance Club and one of the instructors. And Stuart is our grants director, but he does all kinds of other stuff. He does stuff with promotions and what else, what else Stuart? Uh, promotions. Um, I slowly am learning how to dance as well. <laughs> so I have a lot of experience in some, not so much in others. Yeah, and he's, he's been part of the team as well. So yeah, he's been involved. So today is going to be another kind of cool podcast. This is the stages of learning related to dance. And this is uh, something that I learned from an instructor. I wish I could remember who it was, um, but I saw, so I could go back and give credit. Uh, it could be Dave Getty. It could have been a number of the originals back in the old days. But um, we're going to talk about how you kind of go through stages of learning. And right. the first stage is, and I'm going to go back and we're going to talk about each of these, is the first one is called unconsciously incompetent. The second stage is consciously competent, or sorry, consciously incompetent. The third stage is consciously competent. And the fourth stage is unconsciously competent. So it's a bit of a tongue twister to some of that stuff. But as we go through examples of this, and, and I think you'll see um, what we're talking about. So have you heard of this stuff before, Stuart? Or have I, I, I do remember you. Yeah, actually, right from early on when I came out, first started coming out to the club, I do remember you mentioning this. Is that right? And it was very relatable, too, yeah. Because, yeah, we don't we do not do it at our beginner lessons, but I, I know I've used this example many times in the classes that we've taught. But anyways, let's just get right into it. So the first one, unconsciously competent when it comes to dancing. Now, I'm just going to relate students. So I'll relate some of my own stories here as well. Uh, but here you don't know what you don't know. And you don't know that there's a beat to f even follow in the music and that uh, two-step is different than waltz is different than polka and what's what's swing and why are they different? And yeah, you, you, you don't know any of that stuff. You don't know any of it and you don't know how bad you are. <laughs> and, and you really you don't care because you just no. want to get out there and just do whatever you want to the music. Yep. And you just get out there to move. Spent you, many years at unconsciously incompetent. <laughs> you know, I yeah. did too, and I did too for some of it, and I couldn't understand why women couldn't follow what I was doing because I was just making it up as I go, you know. <laughs> but um, at this stage too, people don't know anything about music. Now, I have to say, I was one of those people when I first got involved in dancing, I knew zero about music. I never played a musical instrument had no clue about how any of it worked. Did you have any music background when you got involved? I, I've taught myself, when I got involved, I taught myself to play guitar, but it kind of felt like apples and oranges, mm. other than I guess, like I could pick up like the tempo, yeah. like, oh, this song is fast. Like you could sort of feel, I could feel the beat, I guess. Right. But it didn't feel like, like it had anything to do with dancing. <laughs> Well, and, and this is just it. And we're going to talk about this as we go through this. But it's one thing to feel the beat. Duh, duh, duh. Yeah. It's another thing to move your body yeah. to the time of those beats. I mean, yeah. You know, it, the more I delve into the basics and teaching people the, the, the beginning stuff, dancing's hard. It really is. Because, I mean, especially if they don't know. And, and we've taught a lot of beginners that have never danced and, you know, they're later in life, you know, in the 50s and 60s. And if they've never danced before in their life, it's, it's not easy. It's, it can be hard at times. Um, okay, so the next one, don't know that there's different steps or that some dances even exist. I kind of just alluded to that. Um, don't know what dances to do to what music or that some songs can have even more than one dance. Now that's, that's a thing. We just did a podcast. We talked about uh, tempo, accent, and rhythm. Well, there's certain windows where there's music that has this, the right speed that you might be able to do three or four different dances to. You might be able to do a cha-cha, a two-step, a polka, a six-step, you know, and a swing to one particular song. Um, in our dance routine with the team, 
you, we actually pick some songs that way specifically for that reason so we can mix up those dances. But when you're unconsciously incompetent, you have no clue. <laughs> that, that you see one person out doing this and you see and, and you don't even know what what they're doing because they're just all moving to the same song yeah. and different yeah. different stuff. Um, you also don't understand partnership. Uh, you just do what you do or you just lead and uh, or you just lead and I'll follow or I will help and, and there's there's no there's no understanding of leading and following and so yeah you're complete you're completely green yeah that's a good way to put it and so partnership no I'll just do my thing and you do yours and you won't worry about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and and there again why worry about learning steps just move and enjoy the music so you know and in some ways that unconsciously incompetent stage you're you're in bliss you're it's it's but it can be frustrating it can be time. frustrating thing because it can be fun but like you say it can be frustrating when you want to try to do something um when you want to try to do something right and more often, I think it's the women that get frustrated, too. Uh, probably, yeah. <laughs> okay, so then we're going to move to the next stage. Consciously incompetent. So now you've realized you want to learn some of those moves that are being done out there on the dance floor. And you take a dance class. Well, now they've told you that there's actual beats to the music that you have to move your steps to. So you're aware of the music and the beats and you can move your body to the music. So you can dance a two step, say one, two, three, five. So you can go quick, quick, slow, slow. And so now you've realized that and you can hear the difference between a waltz and a two step. You, you, you like certain songs are better for swing. And so you're, you're becoming better at it. And so you can actually now do a few moves but you're still not sure about what dances to do to what music, but, but you can do some to, to some, so you can pick and choose. Um, you know some of the steps to some of the dances, but you make mistakes all the time. Well, welcome to the real world. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just the way it is. Until you practice it a hundred times, you will make mistakes. Um, you get frustrated at times because it's hard to move with your partner or, or the leader or follower or because they make mistakes too, but because now you, you're aware that you're making mistakes. Whereas in, in stage one, you had no idea, right? Yeah, it's, it's kind of like knowing, no, you know how bad you are. Right. Yeah. And, and that's okay, because it can be, this is supposed to be a temporary stage, um, but you still just don't understand why some things don't work, because you got shown that in class, and you think you remember how it's supposed to go, but it's not working. Yes. So this stage from where we're at, number two, to the next stage, consciously competent, is the danger zone. Because going from consciously incompetent, knowing that you don't know everything, to going to consciously competent, where now you're good at doing some stuff, that's where we lose people because they realize to get to that next stage is what? It's work. work. <laughs> it's work and you got to take some lessons. So now you know how to do the steps. Uh, you have to focus, but you can do the steps, but you make less mistakes. Um, and you understand the music better. The phrasing, you understand that. You can... Uh, you can hear the hits and the breaks in the music. You can hear the accents, you know, you can hear the symbols and different things in the music. So that stuff before you were totally oblivious. You just dance straight through it. But now you can actually hear that in the music. You understand the, the idea of weight transfers and movement to the beats of the music. So you realize when you take a step on one, two, three, five, you actually have to transfer your weight over your step as you're taking that step on the beat of the music. And you're moving with your partner easier and more natural. So, so you know how to fit your, your dance into the song. Like you're interacting with it now. You're kind of plugging in moves to where you think they would sound 
it would be cool and that kind of thing. Yeah, and and you know the moves. I mean, and you know how to do it, yeah. Yeah, and, I mean, you still might make mistakes, but at the same time, you know the moves and you know how to fix them if you, if you don't, if you, if you made a mistake. So now you're consciously competent. You, you know some stuff and you, you do it well. Instead of the, the second stage we were just at where you're consciously incompetent and didn't know how to do them. That's probably also the, part, the, the stage you're at when you can start to help your partner. Yes. And I don't mean like teaching them, but, but like physically make it easier for them. Yes. Yeah. Because you're, you, if, you, if you know, then you probably know if you let it wrong as well. Yeah. Yeah. So the last stage, and this is where people want to end up at, is unconsciously competent, where you don't have to think about the steps. It's just natural. I mean, when I go muscle there, memory. yeah, it's muscle memory. It's like our dance team. We don't have to think about it. We can have a conversation while we do the routine. Um, when, when I go out there on the dance floor, I don't have to think about one, two, three, five, or quick, quick, slow, slow. I just move, and I'm thinking about the movement. Um, when I was first learning the steps, I had to, I had to count it. I had to yeah. I had to do yeah. that to remember. And and you know when you're first learning dances, that's the way that it needs to be. You step on the time to the music, and you and you really do do it cleanly, and you do it consistently right. You can interpret the music this now uh, to the dance. So what I mean by that, not just hearing it in the music, but you can actually do some moves that hit the music and you, you hit a break in the music and you can stop or you can right. come up with a move if there's something accenting that's up that you, you come up with a movement that hits that high note in the music. Um, people are really talking about doing this kind of stuff in West Coast Swing, for example, where you dance and interpret the music. And it definitely is something that you have to be at a different level, not a beginner, in order to be able to do it that way. Um, you can dance on phrase or you can syncopate the music as well. And that's one thing. This would be the first time we've talked about syncopating. Right. When you syncopate the music, you're going to start playing with the steps off the basic pattern. So instead of going quick, quick, slow, slow, you might go quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow. Or you might go quick, 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 four quicks in a, in a row. Beginner dancers don't do that stuff. No, that's really taking off the training wheels. Yeah. And the thing is to do those kind of things and then get back to the basic pattern. Yeah. So that kind of stuff applies in all dances. You can do that in swing, in two-step, in, in, in everything. But that's, again, you have to be at a different level than even consciously incompetent. Some people will try it at that level and, and, and you learn as you go. But at the same time, when you're unconsciously competent, you, you do it smoother. Yeah, I, I think these, the, these divisions, they're not like hard boundaries. You just sort of gradually like melt into the next one and or melt back if you don't dance for a year and a half, but you slowly move along. And um, so you might be really good at two step and then still catching up with Josh. I was just going to say that and you're exactly right. You might be consciously competent at two step, for example, but then not so good at other dances. <laughs> And that's, that is very, very true. Uh, at the unconsciously competent stage two, dancing now is more about interpreting the music by movement. Moving your partner with intuitive connection is light and balanced. So, I mean, here's where it just be, becomes more of moving to the music and not having to think about your steps, thinking about the movement. Oh, this will, this will work really well to this part of the music coming up. And so, um, yeah, you're in a whole different world than you were in the beginning. I, I do have to say, unconsciously, inco unconsciously incompetent, consciously incompetent, and then consciously competent, not all of those are very fun stages. <laughs> the transition from consciously incompetent to consciously competent is actually kind of painful. And I've, like I say, I've seen people give up, and that's unfortunate, right. um, or realize it's too much work, and they don't want to keep doing it. But the blissful stages and where it's so much fun, unconsciously incompetent and unconsciously competent, I mean, you're kind of back full circle again because now it's just fun. Yeah, and it's, it's like 
you sort of just have to realize if you really want to do something that's really cool, you've got to put in maybe a bit more effort because it's worth it, right? It's not, if, if everyone could do it, everyone would. Right. So spend like three months and you'll be so much further ahead. Yeah, yeah. And, and I guess people want to just kind of, you know, they want to know if I come to a lesson, where will I be after four weeks or three weeks? Well, I think with, with a lot of people, uh, we'll get some people into stage two or even maybe, maybe some of them into, into stage three of being consciously competent after four or five weeks. Like you were saying, they might be really good at two-step, they might not be good at some other dances, but they might feel good about doing certain moves yeah. really well after, after a dance session. If, if they want to do themselves a huge favor, they would do a bit of practicing between lessons. Yes. I would say that would make like double their progress. Yeah. Practicing, you know, makes such a huge difference. I know when I was first learning to dance, I uh, not only took lessons and went to dance festivals, but then when I was back home, I would uh, be, you know, going out to the bar and dancing mm -hmm. three and four nights a week. So you, you, you sometimes you learned how to move just because you did it so much. And yeah, you practiced all the time. So kind of just to do a quick recap, those four stages of learning um, apply to a lot of different fields, but it definitely applies to dancing. And uh, I've seen people go through that and just blossom. I've seen some people not enjoy it, the journey quite so much, but it sure can be a lot of fun. And uh, it can be very, very rewarding to, to actually figure it all out and, uh, and, and, and dance. So yeah, any last absolutely. comments, Stuart? I just think like, it, it, the, the, we're, we're sort of highlighting the fact that there is a process you go through. Everyone goes through this process. There's no real skipping parts of it. So don't feel like it's, um, it's bad if you realize you're in stage two. Everyone, everyone was in stage two. And like the, the more you sort of focus on it, the quicker you get through it. Yeah, and you really can't skip. You gotta go through the, oh. you gotta go through the learning process. So yeah, yeah and cut yourself a break it's it's great if you have a, a consistent partner through this whole process some people don't and right. so they'll learn with one person and then they kind of got to take a couple steps back and learn with a new partner and that makes it hard too so if that's it can if that's the case don't get down on yourself about no. it no so no at the end of the day the more sort of people you learn with the better you will be because you're used to different different um partners yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, Stuart. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. And hopefully that uh, is a help for people before they come out to classes, or even if you've been out to classes already, don't get frustrated. Don't give up. Know that you got to go through the learning curve like we all did and uh, enjoy the journey. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, Stuart. And we'll see you on the next one. See ya.